Hey guys, welcome to this video and my channel. My name is Heather. I am the owner and creator here at Wicked Whiskey Designs. And today we are working on this absolutely ridiculously gorgeous mermaid scale tumbler. Now this is part two of our three cup series. We're doing kind of like a cursey series. Uh, the first tumbler that we did was also a mermaid tumbler, but 100% different than how this one was made. I will go ahead and add a link to that tutorial in the description box below so that you can check that out if you're so inclined. In regards to this one, I'm also going to link in the description box everything I use to make this. So you will have access to all the same products if you'd like to go ahead and um, and give your you know give a try making this yourself. What else? Like and subscribe. This is a brand new channel. Um, my schedule kind of got off track this past month for personal reasons, but we're back and I have a ton of content on its way to you. So you want to go ahead and make sure that you are notified whenever the tutorial is dropped as sometimes my schedule gets a little sketchy, but that way you'll at least be in the know and you'll get a little notification of the next tutorial whenever that drops, hopefully next week. Um, what else? I think that's pretty much it for this intro. I'm going to go ahead and get started, show you everything you need to make this tumbler. <laughs> To start this tumbler, you're gonna start with a completely naked stainless steel tumbler. You are going to do a light sand on it, but that's all. You're not gonna add epoxy or sealer or anything else to it. You are also gonna need a roll of double side tape and you are going to have your dragon scales, or in this case, mermaid scales, already cut out of your cardstock off of your silhouette or your Cricut. Usually for a 30 ounce tumbler, it takes me two or three pages of scales, so plan accordingly on that. Go ahead and remove your scales from the, um, you know, the cardstock, the part that's not cut. And then using your double-sided tape, wrap those, uh, wrap the tape around your tumbler is using as much space as you want. I don't completely cover the tumbler in double-sided tape. Some people do. Some people don't. Find what works best for you. Keep in mind that it is double-sided tape, so when you are laying your scales down, make sure you're not pushing your hand into any exposed um, tape as you'll get stuck to your own tumbler. Then, one by one, use your scales to cover the tumbler. Lay your first tum uh, scale down at the bottom of the tumbler. Lay your next scale directly next to it and carry that pattern going all the way around the cup. Your second line, you're going to offset your scales. So you are going to put your first scale of your second line in between two of the scales on the first line, if that makes sense. You want an overlapping pattern. Continue to go around the cup and then start moving upwards. When you get to the top of the cup, you have scales from the bottom all the way up to the top. Your scales are gonna overhang the edge of the tumbler. Using a pair of scissors or a sharp craft knife, go ahead and remove that. You don't want um, your scales you know, hanging off the edge, so to speak. If you do find that your double-sided tape, you're missing a section, you don't have tape where you need to have tape, just cut a small piece and kind of do a little patchwork job if necessary. Mm -hmm. You are looking for a uniform top to bottom overlapping mermaid scale pattern. But this is a mermaid tumbler. Like it doesn't have to be perfect. If your scales get a little wonky at some point, no harm, no foul. You know, it's gonna look gorgeous regardless. So again, when you get to the top, use your scissors, cut off the edge there, and then you're gonna take it to Mod Podge. You can either apply multiple thin coats of Mod Podge or one big heavy coat of Mod Podge. It doesn't really matter as long as your cup is fully sealed. You do not want there to be any gaps in the coverage as when you hit the epoxy, it's going to cause a problem. So make sure, regardless if you do multiple thin or one heavy, make sure that coat of Mod Podge is 100% sealing your cup. At the very end, use long brush strokes. You want to make sure that you have an even coat. You're not having any ridges or swirls or brush marks as because of the mica powder, those will show. So make sure you have an even coat when you're all done. 
All right, kids, let's see here. This is what, isn't this lovely? Yeah, I know. We're not even surprised anymore, are we? Um, this is what I'm going to be using on this mermaid tumbler. I love this color. These colors are amazing. However, we have to pick out Micah's to match this. And I have to be honest, I have Micah's everywhere. So, All right, so I'm a thinking. Um, just kind of starting. That's kind of where we're at um, to be determined. So that's our start point. Okay, guys, I am looking fabulous today. Welcome to the junk garage here, um, the messiest workshop around. What we're gonna do now is this. We kind of sort of have our micas figured out, um, but you know what? Micas can look different based on whatever backing color you're putting them on. Am I even in frame? No. Um, so if you put micas on a white background, it's going to look different than if you put it on, say, a black background. And I don't know which way I want to go with this. Like, I kind of have it in my head of what we're doing. Um, you know, to be honest, it's been a really effed up last couple weeks, personally. So um, my brain hasn't exactly been on this cup. I have a roundabout idea of what I want to do. But like most of these tutorials, it's kind of, you know... You know, we kind of roll with it and see how it comes out. So what I've done is this. Ah! Knocking shit over. I have a junk cup, okay? This is just um, a jacked up glitter cup that was going to get stripped. I have white spray painted on one side. I have black spray painted on the other side. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the micas on both and see which looks better. Um, you know, just because, like normally when I do mermaids, I do them on a black background. And I use um, color shift mica and it has like a very rustic dark look. I don't know that that's what I want to do. I don't know that that's not what I want to do. So we're going to add these colors that we picked out to both sides and see how they look. And then we'll just kind of go from there and we'll see, uh, we'll see what we come up with. So let's go do that. Okay, kids, what we have, we have a makeup brush from Amazon. We have a tumbler hold on a minute let me try to boost you out a bit come out there we are we have a tumbler like I said spray painted white on one side black on the other I don't really know which direction we're going to go in for a base um, spray sealer you can apply mica to cups different ways okay I see a lot of people use spray paint as their base. And basically the idea that we're rolling with is this. You spray your cup, you wait for it to get a little tacky, you take your little brush, you dip it in your mica powder, you whoosh whoosh, and, um, and you're good. My thing is this, I am not nearly organized or able to achieve perfection on the first try in my entire life. I do not have that skill set. I never will. I recognize that about myself and we just accept it and move on. That being said, I don't want to use spray paint as my, as my uh, sticky sealer base because if I mess that up, and I will, uh, what are you doing at that point? Okay? Um, especially on a mermaid scale, because you spray paint it, you get it all my good, it's jacked up, now you're spray painting it again, you're losing that detail to your to your scales, I feel sometimes. Or if you get sections that are awesome and section you know, sections that are crap, you're just jacking it up. People do this all the time and they come out perfect. I am not somebody with that skill set. Again, this is just me. So what I use is clear sealer. And another thing is, if you use spray paint, you have to spray your cup, wait a certain amount of time, you know, 15, 20, 5 minutes, 10 minutes, something like that, for it to get tacky and then come back to it. I am never going to remember to do that. I can guarantee I'm going to spray paint it, walk away, come back an hour and a half later and be like, oh shit. So sealer for me works perfectly because what I can do is layer up my colors nothing's getting overdone nothing's getting missed I'm not forgetting about it I'm not coming back to a mess um, if I mess something up I literally add another layer of spray sealer and add another layer of um, mica so this is my go-to you know for those who are you know 
mica mica applying challenge this is my go-to um so like i said a couple seconds ago in the other part of this little uh, little video depending on the look you're going for you can put that pink um mica on black and it may look exact exactly different than what it would be on white so what we're going to do is uh we've got all of our little tools here i'm going to show you how i do this i might flip you to a different uh location so you can see it in real time like and not just mush mushed here but we'll see um and i'm going to show you how i'm going to go through and figure out what color uh what color backer i want to use on this cup and then we're going to go ahead start adding some mica Okay guys, so what I'm gonna do, and I don't know if you can see me if um, it's too dark, but hopefully you can see me. Um, I am gonna go ahead and spray this entire cup, right, uh, excuse me, white. And so 2X Rust-Oleum um, Flat White. I'm gonna go ahead and spray this. We're gonna let it dry, and then we're gonna go ahead and move on to adding our mica powders. Okay guys. So we have our mermaid scale tumbler. It's painted white. We're gonna go ahead and start applying mica in kind of like a random color, you know, splotchy vibe going on here. Um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna spray the entire thing in clear sealer. And then we are gonna start layering colors using our makeup brush and our different micas. So I'm trying not to have too many different colors. Um, I feel like we're going to start with what we got and then we'll kind of run with there. So when you hear me go shh in the background, that's me spraying with the clear sealer. I figured you really didn't need to watch me do that. The entire cup, not just sections. A little bit of mica. Tap off your excess while this is still wet. Go ahead and start applying. Even little strokes. We're going to start with this rose gold base and then we're going to add to it and it's going to look very um, streaky splotchy for now. You are pressing firm but you ain't trying to kill it. All right, we're just trying to get a little bit of evenness going on here. And don't forget your bottom. Now, as you can see, there is mica powder everywhere, which is why I always use this thing. It will go everywhere. So if you are of a very clean workspace, uh, you know, opposed to mine, be very mindful because this literally will go everywhere. So outside garages, um, places that you know that you can clean up afterwards. So splotchy, streaky, that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead, hit it one more time. Go back. Oops, I didn't mean to shake you. Sorry. Excess. And um, I put a lot on, knowing that a lot of it is obviously going to fall off. Okay. And then what I'll do is just kind of with my brush kind of skate anything extra off onto my thing, my parchment paper. You can just see little clouds of mica going all over the place. All over my glitter bottles. Hmm. Honestly, I normally do this at my next, um, my next table over. Um, so I know I always have this, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay, so perfect, no, better, yes. Normally it takes me about three passes to be happy with it. Um, so I'm gonna do one more pass of the rose gold, then we're gonna kinda start adding in some of the other colors, okay? And 
And the one thing I like about doing it this way is you're not sitting here waiting for 15 minutes for, you know, things to get sticky or tacky or, you know, depending on where you live. Like right now, I sp okay, I spray painted this white, I don't know, six minutes ago uh, because I'm in Florida and our weather is ridiculous right now. So, you know, other places, maybe it takes longer. I don't know. I just know that doing it this way, I don't have to wait, and I like that. So again, kind of skating off anything that's extra. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is stop real quick. All right, so what I'm going to do is stop real quick, and this rose gold, if I was working all like in purples and blues, I really wouldn't worry about um, mixing or not mixing, but rose gold is not the same as purples and blues and greens, oh my, so I'm going to get, um, in the interest of saving my rose gold, get as much of that off as I can, and then what I'll do is just kind of, ugh. Now, where were we? And now I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of this teal in just certain areas. I am not looking for anything like a, like a pattern or a thought process. Uh, I want these colors to just kind of morph into each other. So I'm just going to be very rough with my blending right now. Um, like before, firm but not ridiculous. Um, so I have a nice little, you know, mishmash of colors going on. I'm going to go ahead and add another thing of spray sealer. And now I'm going to bring in a little bit of this darker purple. This is, I think, dark though. So I'm not going to be too aggressive with this per se. Oops. That doesn't come out as dark as I thought it was. Um, I'm just looking to have just little splashes of all these really great colors um, so that when we do add that decal, or excuse me, that water slide, you know, it's bringing in all of these really, really pretty colors. All right, one more shot. And now we're gonna bring in some of this moss green. Ooh. Okay, that one got a bit aggressive, but whatever. Um, and just kinda, like I said, we're not trying to add in any kind of pattern or any kind of whatever. Okay, see right there where it just got really white and splotchy? Um, my brush stuck to the um, spray sealer. So that happens, just put a little spray, a little extra on top, you'll be fine. All right, now what I wanna do is before, I want to add, ah crap, okay. Just a little bit more of the rows in certain sections. Like I said, we are just kind of layering. And mishmashing. All right, and then last but not least, what I wanna do, I don't really want this to get too, too dark. These scales are awesome because there's still texture there. Ah, hold on a minute. This is why you are supposed to be well thought out and organized, unlike me. Okay. All right, spray this thing again. And what do, I like this gold. So I kind of just wanted to do like a little, more like on the upstroke a little bit. 
and just kind of um, kind of brighten it up a little bit. I'm not using very much except for that one spot that just went a little wild. I just want to brighten this up. Stick, damn it. And if you get too much, just like push, 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 and it'll come off. So I'm kind of digging that. Like I was kind of like a little bit like, uh oh, I don't know about these. And now that I added the gold, I'm like, yeah, buddy. Okay, so there we go. That's how we did it. Complete chaos until the very end where things are banging. That pretty much explains literally everything I do. So, um, yeah, like that's crazy. I really didn't think that was going to come together, to be honest with you. I was a little concerned that the colors were going to be too dark. But you add that gold on top of it, psh, money. Purdy, purdy, purdy. Okay, so now that we have this absolutely banging mermaid cup, um, I do not seal my micas. I don't because you already have spray so much spray sealer on here okay so what I'm gonna do is just do one last um, coat of spray sealer on there and let it um, dry we're gonna go ahead send this to epoxy and get this rolling look at that that is so freaking pretty can you see because my phone's about to die so I can't really see what you're seeing but I hope you're seeing it because it's really pretty all right that's where we're at I'll see you in a minute. Next, go ahead and send your cup for epoxy. You don't need to drown this in epoxy as we are adding multiple layers, but I would mix up somewhere around 20 mLs of epoxy and using a gloved hand, apply with even strokes. Be sure to blow out your micro bubbles so that you don't have any bubbles on your cup and let it spin. Hey guys, okay, so I gotta be honest, I'm like totally in love with this freaking thing the way it is. Um, you know, sometimes I find myself in these tutorials like, oh, we've gotta use every freaking trick in the bag and let's do 627 different techniques on a cup and let's go all extra and blah, blah, blah. And you know what, look at that shit. That is booty full, absolutely gorgeous. Um, I do still need to obviously add the mermaid decal though. And we need to make a path for that to happen. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do, like I'm not even thinking I'm putting glitter on this thing, although I probably will at the top and the bottom. Um, but even that, mm, I don't know that I will or not. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do a power wash swirl on it um, just so that I can have a white backing to add that mermaid um, water slide. I'm going to go ahead and do the same technique um, to the power wash that I did on the last one in that I've got alcohol inks. So kind of do something very similar to adding the colors to, so it's just not like white and, you know, ah. so um, I'm going to go ahead, add a power wash swirl to it right now. And then we're going to do a coat of epoxy over that. We're going to add the water slide. We're going to add alcohol ink, probably some glitter. Cause let's be honest, we all know me. The more glitter, the better. Um, but ah, I don't even know that. Like I said, that is just begging. That is so freaking pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and do the swirl and we'll go on from there and see where it ends up. Are we loving my hair? <laughs> Get on the internet. Look all perfect. Make sure your hair is done. Your nails are pretty. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do the power wash swirl on this right now. Um, and for anybody who wants to like comment on all of this okay ladies it is florida it is summer i'm in my garage it is approximately 8927 degrees with 120 percent humidity right now so honestly this is the best it's gonna get <laughs> at this point so all that being said um okay power wash done power wash we're gonna go ahead and add our swirl keep in mind the more power okay how do i say this the more area you put power wash that is where your paint is not going to go so if i'm doing a swirl i am going to go ahead and do power wash 
more like on the outside of where I want the swirl to be and that way the paint has a place to go. Um, you kind of have to think in the negative space when it comes to power wash. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm not going to take you with me to go rinse, um, to rinse off. I don't feel like we need to be, you know, we're not attached like that, but, um, I'm going to go ahead and do this and then we're going to send it for epoxy and then we're going to move on. Okay, great. Okay, so FYI, if you power wash something and you don't like it, you can take it off as long as you haven't epoxied it. Take some acetone and a paper towel, wait for, um, you know, you can either wait for this to, the paint to dry or not, um, and just wipe it right off. And I gotta be honest, I wanted to like it. I don't, I like this side, this is freaking ridiculous. So I'm going to take this power wash off just because I don't, I think it's too much. It's taking away from all of this. No matter what I do with it, it's going to kind of, hmm. So I'm going to take this off. Um, we're going to go to plan B. Okay. So work in progress. Okay. So we took it all off. Um, before anybody asks me like why I am not like just editing that part out and just completely blowing over that part like it never even happened. I feel like it's totally okay to normalize that some things, things don't work. Like sometimes you might have a bright idea and then like you do it and you're like, well, that looks like trash. You know, I see a lot of tumbler makers who put out all these amazingly beautiful things. And as a tumbler maker myself, I'm watching a wasp try to attack me. Welcome to Florida. It's like Jurassic Park. You know, but um, I see all these, you know, tumbler makers and it's like, their stuff is ridiculously amazing. It's perfect every time. And it's like, as a tumbler maker myself, I know it doesn't work that way. It just doesn't. Some cups, absolutely. You nail it. You got an idea, you run with it. It's perfect. But honestly, like things like this, like how pretty is that? I didn't expect it to be that pretty, to be honest with you. Sometimes it's okay just to stop in midstream and be like, ah, let's do something different. I had an idea. Now I don't know if it's going to work. So yeah, I'm going to leave stuff like this you know, in these videos because it's okay to normalize it. Things happen. Now I need to figure out what I'm doing with it. <laughs> I think what I'm going to do is instead of doing like the swirl, um, the swirl power wash, I'm going to do just like, um, you know, a section on the front. I need to go figure it out. I think that might be a little too, I don't know if that's going to be a little too basic for this cup or if this cup needs something basic like that because the rest of it's ridiculous. So I'm going to go figure out what we're going to do and I'm going to see you in the next section in, you know, about five minutes from now. So bye. Hey guys. Okay. So what I think I'm going to do is, um, I am going to power wash. Where am I at? Over here. I'm going to power wash like the front of it, a little area here so that my water slide has a place to go. Um, I feel like, I feel like this base is gorgeous. I feel like if I start adding the kitchen sink to this, it's just gonna take away from this and I don't want that. I also don't want it to, you know, be like an exact copy of technique with um, the part one of this series, which honestly the entire kitchen sink was applied to that cup. Um, I feel like, um, I feel like I might just be overthinking this and I think that this is absolutely gorgeous and that this is the right direction to go in. So I'm going to go ahead. Like I said, I'm going to do a white swatch of the power wash. Um, we're going to epoxy it after it's epoxied. I'm going to add the, the water slide and then we're going to take the alcohol inks that should hopefully kind of match this. I sure hope they match this. Um, and then kind of, you know, fill the, the white space in like we did with the, the uh the first cup okay and if you have no idea what i'm talking about there's a link i'm gonna put the link down below to the first cup go see what it is i'm talking about um and then i'm a thinking then i'm thinking we're gonna top and bottom with, with some glitter i just you know i'm not I was going to add foils and I was going to add, um, little cutout scales and blah, blah, blah. I think it's just going to take away from all this. So we're not going to do any of that. We're not. It will, 
the third cup in the series will just go back to being like extra and all that. But like I said, I really think this is just really, really pretty. And I think that if we go simpler for the other things, um, it's going to let all of this shine. So I'm going to go ahead and do a thing of power wash. We're going to shoot it for epoxy and then we're going to move on. That's where we are. So now that your epoxy is cured, we're going to go ahead and apply your water slide and your alcohol inks. Go ahead and trim your water slide to the appropriate size, then saturate it in water, front and back. I also normally have a paper towel saturated in water waiting as well. Slowly slide the water slide from its backing onto your cup, and then using the wet paper towel, Go ahead and smooth out your water slide so that there are no air bubbles, no creases, no wrinkles, that it's just on there perfect as can be. Then we are going to send this for another round of epoxy before adding the next step, which is the alcohol inks. Okay, now that that last layer of epoxy has cured, now we're going to go ahead and add the alcohol ink. Since this is Color Shift Chameleon Alcohol Ink, it needs to be on a darker background to show. So initially I tried doing this on a Baja Blue Alcohol Ink background, just lightly adding blue alcohol ink to the white areas that were power washed and it just didn't come out very well, or I should say it didn't come out like I wanted. So I went with using black alcohol ink. Now this is not pinata alcohol ink. This is a generic alcohol ink that I got in a larger kit from Amazon. It's not as dark as pinata. It's almost like a dark gray versus a super dark rich black. So it worked pretty well for what I needed. Grab a little bowl, fill it with 91 or 99 percent alcohol, and you will go ahead and dip your little makeup sponge into the alcohol. Make sure that where you are planning on putting your alcohol inks is completely covered in the pure alcohol first, and then add your black alcohol ink to your makeup brush and lightly dab it in all of the white areas you're trying to cover. Once that is done, go ahead and start adding the chameleon alcohol ink to the makeup sponge, and you're going to lightly dab it in the areas you're looking to have it. It's not going to be a huge color shift per se. So if you think that adding the purple is going to be flaming purple, it's not. It just breaks up that black and becomes really, really pretty. Okay, guys. So this is what the plan is. Because that cardstock is right up on the edge of that um, the tumbler, as a matter of fact, it's kind of going over the edge a little bit. We need to bring that down because if we don't, the epoxy has nowhere to, um, to hold on to. So if this was glitter and epoxy, then what I would normally do is take my electric hand sander and literally just zzz, around the edge and easy peasy lemon squeezy. This is cardstock. You can't do that. It's paper. So if you do that, it's going to shred that paper. It's going to fray it. It's going to look like trash. And then you're going to end up with a huge mess. So my plan for this is I'm going to take my little um, um, ah, torch. Okay. I'm going to lightly torch that rim, the epoxy that's on that rim. And then I'm going to take a super, super sharp um, craft knife. And I'm just going to trim that edge. That's the plan. So I'm going to go ahead, get to it, show you how we do it. So next what you're going to do is try to open up a tiny sliver of stainless steel between the very top rim of the cup and the card stock to where the dragon scales or the mermaid scales start. So using your torch very lightly, torch around the rim of the cup and with very precise, gentle, firm movement, take a very sharp craft knife right up underneath that rim and then slowly slice down as far as you can until you hit that stainless steel cup gently pull up the pieces of the cut away cardstock until you have gone all the way around the rim of the cup. Take a very uh, light sanding block and just sand very lightly around the rim and you are ready to send it to epoxy. 
Now that you have a stainless rim exposed to the top of your cup, go ahead and stir up about 30 mLs of your favorite epoxy. Add a little bit of shimmer additive to that epoxy and using a gloved hand, apply your epoxy in smooth, even strokes until your entire cup is covered with a light layer of epoxy. Then go ahead, grab your glitter and lightly sprinkle your glitter on the top and the bottom of your tumbler. Also, don't forget to blow out your air bubbles in that middle section, but uh, definitely avoid the top and bottom with using the torch so that you don't set your glitter on fire. Once this layer of epoxy has cured, mm -hmm. go ahead, stir up another 30 mLs and add a final coat. Hey guys, okay, tips and tricks for making this cup. I cannot believe, can I just show you, can we just close up on those scales? Look at that. I love those. Mm. All right, so tips and tricks on making this cup. Let's walk through some stuff. Okay, number one, card stock to make your scales. Okay, I am linking below the, um, the file that I purchased to do the scales. Now, if you go on Etsy, you'll see where they have dragon scales or they have mermaid scales. Mermaid scales seem to be a little bit wider, a little bit shorter. Dragon scales are a little bit bigger. And um, by now you have to know that I am not about wasting time on things that I don't have to. So I went with dragon scales and I like them better. And um, on the file that I got, I even kind of pulled them, the file out of it to make it even larger. So just kind of grab a file that you like best. Um, obviously, if you want to do smaller scales, you know, you run with that. I made mine a little bit bigger to save myself a little bit of time. Um, Double-sided tape is a gift from the gods. Okay, honestly, that stuff's amazing. You can get it on Amazon cheap. I think I got a six pack or a, a 12 pack for next to no money. Um, again, that'll get linked down below. Um, you know, I've seen some tumbler makers literally do like, you don't even see the cup. It's just, con it's nothing but double-sided tape. Um, not saying that's wrong by any means. It's just not how I do it. Um, I go ahead and, you know, you'll see in the, in the video, uh, or you did see in the video where I don't cover the entire thing. Like I space my tape out a little bit. I don't feel like it's necessary to coat the entire thing in double-sided tape, but you do you, you know, if you feel more comfortable literally doing just perfect rings all around, go for it. Double-sided tape is extremely easy and extremely sticky. So when you are going ahead and peeling off your, um, the you know, the protective little film there, be mindful of that. I can't tell you how many times I've been putting scales down and then like, you know, start like sticking myself to the double-sided tape. So when you're doing that, make sure you keep your wrist up and just kind of, you know, take your time and go through it. Um, for a, a 30 ounce cup, I'm trying to think how long it takes me to, to do the scales let's say half an hour, maybe, give or take a little bit of time either way. Um, just kind of sit down, zone out, put your TV show on, get an audio book going, something, and just kind of, you know, get it done. It's a little bit of a pain. It's a little bit of a time suck, but, you know, the results speak for themselves. They're amazing. What is next? Um, you'll see in the video too, where I went ahead and trimmed that top with just a pair of scissors, um, just kind of to get it going. You want to make sure when this is all said and done that your scales are a little bit underneath your, uh, you know, the edge of the cup. Your cup needs stainless to have epoxy stick to. I don't even think that sentence came out right, but you know what I mean. You need to have that stainless rim so that your epoxy has a place to stick and, and adhere to, you know, cure to, however you want to say it. So I went ahead and trimmed off the top of those dragon scales, um, excuse me, mermaid scales, um, you know, with a pair of scissors. And then I obviously tightened it up later in the tutorial. So just kind of be mindful of that as well. When it comes to mica powders. Um, you saw where I went ahead and Mod Podge this thing. I put a heavy, heavy, heavy coat of Mod Podge on this. If you want to do multiple layers, go for it. Um, I don't, you know, I just don't. I put one big heavy 
uh, layer of Mod Podge on there. Make sure everything is sealed in, you know, just jammed up jelly tight. Make sure everything is coated, everything is sealed, and then I move on with life. Um, if something happened and something, you know, twerked up and, and needed another coat, obviously I would add that. So depending on how you want to do it, if you want to do multiple thin layers, go for it. You want to do one big thick layer, go for it. There's no right or wrong answer to that as far as I'm aware. Mica powders are so freaking fun. I love micas. Um, I will say that before putting any kind of mica powder, um, if you're doing any other kind of a project or whatnot, always check and see what background your mica is going to look best against and to deliver the results you're looking for. The mica powders that I um, had on hand, um, I think maybe one, no, maybe multiple ones are Color Shift. Color Shift is a funny little beast, okay? Color Shift looks a lot of times um, best against black. You'll see in the section with the, um, the actual Color Shift inks, I did not realize they were Chameleon Color Shift when I bought them, or I should say I probably knew that at the time. Fast forward a month and I forgot about it. So let's be honest, that's probably more along the lines of how it went. Um, but a lot of times chameleon color shift things uh, look best against black. It's what allows all of the magic of chameleon color shift things to come to life. So uh, always double check before you, you know, start attacking your prepped cup where there's no sometimes no turning back or a, a bit of a pain to turn back. Always kind of take a little bit of a minute and see what background color is going to really highlight your product in the best light based on what you're looking for. And you'll see in the video that we did do that, you know, in my janky little, ex you know, experiment of white and black background. Um, it doesn't need to be pretty, it doesn't need to be fancy, just make sure you've got your color rolling how you want it. If we don't, if we didn't do that, for example, in the alcohol ink section, um, then I would have sat there and just started putting you know, ink on here and wondering why it's coming out clear. So like I said, just kind of know your products a little bit better than me apparently and, you know, roll with it the best way, you know, based on the look you're going for. These, um, these, these micas just came out stupid pretty, like stupid pretty. So I'm glad, um, I'm glad that we, you know, followed through with what the colors we chose. Keep in mind when it comes to something like this, or especially if you're playing with micas or even alcohol ink, sometimes you just gotta see it through. Like when I started doing this, you know, when I started putting stuff down, you saw, I think I went through three passes, which is usually what I do. Um, I don't normally just stop at one or two. Normally I'll take it to three, sometimes four passes if need be when it comes to mica powders. And first pass, it looks like trash. Second pass, still looks like trash. Third pass, hmm. Mm, kind of digging it. So third and fourth pass is kind of where you're going to start seeing all the magic happen and you're going to be like, ah, oh, damn, that looks awesome. So, you know, sometimes you got to give things a minute. Okay. Most things don't look awesome the first time you run through it. Um, what else? Okay. So we might good. And then we went ahead and we did a coat of epoxy and we added our, um, water slide. On the first mermaid video, which I know you've all watched, if you haven't, you're going to, we didn't stop to do another coat of epoxy after we added the water slide, we jumped right into alcohol ink work. And that worked for that cup. This cup is different. Um, you know, when I was doing this cup, I was actually trying to do something totally different because I didn't want to just be like, hi, here's the same cup in a different color, yay. So, you know, this one's gonna have a little bit of a different, um, a different method to it and it's a good thing we did add that extra coat of um, epoxy after we added the water slide because obviously the ink part needed to get tweaked um, you know like I said when I first this uh, tutorial of this tutorial you know was supposed to come out the week after the first one so everything I bought was from like a month or so ago, a month, month and a half ago. And I apologize that there was such a delay in the, um, in the schedule here. Um, our dog, one of our dogs died 
and if you are a dog lover then you know exactly how that goes um so not to you know go all up into that but she was sick she was diagnosed with a de uh, degenerative disease about 10 months ago and this past month well now about six weeks you know things kind of really went downhill so um you know that's what the delay was in this the products that I initially bought that I expected to use the next week obviously you know five six weeks later it's kind of forgot what I bought so that's where the um the ink section of this kind of had to like step back and be like well that's just not doing what I thought it was going to do at all so you, sometimes you just have to regroup and if you've watched more than one tutorial of mine then you know that lord knows we are regrouping all the time everything seems like a great idea and it's just going to go off without a hitch and at some point Heather's going to be like yeah that didn't work at all let's try plan b always have a plan b plan b plan c plan d always and then one plan that could possibly get you you know put in jail but i digress anyway so definitely um add in that that extra layer of epoxy when you after you do your water slide just to make sure that your ink work is not going to interrupt that decal if we didn't add that extra coat of epoxy um you know the ink work that you know the ink that we were doing would have messed up that decal what else hmm. um so let's see what else you know i wasn't going to add glitter i think at some point in the tutorial i said i'm not even gonna, i'm not even going to add glitter I'm, well we all know i'm going to add glitter right because the more glitter the better i didn't want it to take away from her though um and i needed something that was also going to like match this whole vibe here so i went with two glitters you'll you know you saw that i added at the end i like i said i didn't want it dark i didn't want it to be you know like she was boxed in so to speak so i went with something really light really translucent i think it came out beautiful um you know you can kind of play around with that if you want more of a darker vibe obviously run with that I just wanted to add a little bit of something because you know I can't do a tumbler and not have glitter on there. It's really hard. It almost causes physical pain. So I had to add it at the end. Um, the only other thing I can think to talk about is the scale situation. Now, um, I hope it came across in the video what I was trying to accomplish. Um, I was on my my counter there and was trying to like zoom in and I don't really know that it, I achieved what I was going for in in that respect um for tightening up the scale section after you get to the point where you've mod podged you've epoxied uh before you end it before you get to the part where you're adding the glitter and whatnot what I did was I took my torch I lightly you know ran my torch around the um the rim of the cup you know where the scales were coming literally right up to that edge if not a little bit over i ran my torch very light around there so that the epoxy was softening up i took it a ridiculously sharp brand new craft knife and then ran my knife right under that edge there as straight as possible um and then peeled off the excess um cardstock from the top if you and after that i went ahead and lightly sanded it with a, a sanding brick and then i went and actually took it out to my electric hand sander and real light like i didn't get all up down you know all up in it but i real real light did a, a, a run around the rim as well um you want to as much as i love my electric hand sander this is card stock all right which means if you take your electric hand sander and you brrr, all the way around there real hard and heavy your cardstock is going to shred it's going to shred like you would it's just cardboard let's be honest it's all it really is so you know what happens when you you know rip that it's going to go everywhere and be a mess so just save yourself a little bit of trouble go ahead and um you know soften up that epoxy use your craft nice it's okay to use a, a brick around it real light just to kind of tame everything down um and then like i said you know using the electric sander i didn't have any problems with it but i was like holding my breath the whole time to see if i had made a mistake in doing that so just stick with the brick um i think that's it um like i said i'm really happy i love how this came out totally different than the last one i cannot believe how pretty that is um you know based on the colors that we chose like i i didn't expect it to be that pretty i really 
I don't know what I thought it was gonna do, but not that. It, it definitely looks beautiful. So um, definitely, you know, have fun with the Micah Powers. If you wanna go like a different, get a different vibe, just have fun with, with Micahs. They're amazing. You know, pick colors that you think are gonna complement each other, that complement if you're not using this decal, whichever one you're using. Um, and then definitely just run with it because, you know, it, it it's just gorgeous. It comes out so pretty. So, you know, definitely have fun with your creativity on that one. Anyway, have a great week. Bye.